presenting America's number one comic strip character. Look at the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman. Young America's stalwart idol whose astounding exploits are responsible for the unprecedented monthly sale of 800,000 copies of Action Comics magazine and over a million of the quarter copies of Superman magazine. Hailed from Maine to California as the hero of the hour, Superman appears in 248 daily and Sunday newspapers, is on the air three times a week, has been licensed to manufacturers of dolls, games, play suits, raincoats, jigsaw puzzles, chewing gum, candy, balloons, and a host of other products. And beginning in January 1941, will appear in a series of Paramount animated cartoons to be released monthly in 4,000 motion picture theaters throughout the United States. Young America waits anxiously for each new issue of Action Comics and Superman to hit the newsstand. Hey, listen! A new Action Comics just come out, and boy, has it got swell adventure and Superman in it! Parents approve of Superman because he makes no use of guns or other weapons, but fights a never-ending battle against crime and oppression. His motto, strength, courage, justice. Over 100,000 boys and girls in the United States and Canada are members of the Supermen of America, a club dedicated to Americanism. One mother says, My boy is eight and can't seem to get enough of Superman. I should like to thank the publishers of Action Comics magazine for including a health page in every issue. Billy has been eating his cereal and drinking his milk regularly since Superman told him to do so. And finally, recognition for Superman from some of the most famous radio programs on the air. Bob Hope, Eddie Cantor, Kay Kaiser, and last but far from least, the inimitable Fred Allen. Listen. Who is the most popular comic strip character in the newspapers today? I give up. It's Superman. You mean our guest tonight is Superman? No, not Superman. Our guest tonight is the man who originated Superman. He has written all of Superman's exploits since this idol of millions made his first public appearance. He's Mr. Jerry Siegel. Good evening, Mr. Siegel. Good evening, Fred. So you are the man behind Superman, Mr. Siegel. Uh, No, I'm just one of the men, Fred. I write the situations and the dialogues, and the strip is drawn by my collaborator, Joe Schuster. Well, you seem uh, seem rather young to be the instigator of this highly successful feature, Mr. Siegel. How old are you? Twenty-five. And how long have you and Mr. Schuster been working on your high-voltage Robin Hood? We, st- we started about eight years ago, but Superman has been in print only the past two years. Well, what caused the delay? Cirrhosis of the batteries? <laughs> No, Fred. It took us six years to sell Superman. Uh He was turned down by almost every comic editor in the country. Well, they laughed at Fulton with his steamboat, you know. (laughs) I guess around your home, Superman was known as Siegel's Folly. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me, where did your strip first appear? In May 1938, Superman came out in a magazine called Action Comics. Was he well received? The strip attracted so much attention that the publishers decided to give Superman his own magazine. And his popularity increased then by leaps and bounds. Yes, Fred. Today, Superman is in 218 newspapers, reaching 20 million people. He's in magazines, on the radio, and now he is going to appear in Paramount Shorts. Well, who, just who is Superman supposed to be, Mr. Siegel? He isn't old Frank Merriwell with a dynamo in his union suit, is he? (laughs) Uh, No, Fred. Superman is a super being who came from the planet Krypton. He uses his tremendous powers to fight evil and injustice. He can do about anything, can't he? Uh, Superman can run faster than a bullet travels. He can lift an ocean liner out of the water. And uh, he can even stop a train with his bare hands. Can he open a Pullman window? (laughs) 
easily, Fred. What a man. I noticed that Superman is always benefiting humanity. Yes, Fred. He saves people from floods, stops wars, and he's always breaking up primary. Well, fortunately, Superman only exists in your imagination, Mr. Siegel. If he stamped out all of our crime, J. Edgar Hoover would be reduced to playing bits on gangbusters. <laughs> Now, tell me, how far ahead do you have to write your strips? I usually keep three months in advance. Oh, you're so afraid of your syndicated Frankenstein? Uh, no, it's Mr. Ellsworth, the editor, and my wife. They get after me. They do, huh? Mm-hmm. Why don't you get Superman after that? <laughs> well, it must be a wonderful... It must be a wonderful feeling, Mr. Siegel. Twenty million people waiting with bated breaths to see if Superman is going to pull up the Holland Tunnel and blow the perisphere through it for a spitball. <laughs> and, you, and you are the only... It's Mr. Holland. Thank you a lot, Mr. Holland. <laughs> Every time we plug the tunnel, Mr. Holland claps. You know, it's very nice of you. And uh, you are the only man in America who knows what's going to happen. I don't feel any different, Fred. Oh, you're just being modest, Mr. Siegel. After all, you dominate a muscular marble with a dual personality. When Superman isn't Superman, he's he's merely disguised as a reporter, isn't he? Uh, yes, he's Clark Kent, a meek little chap with glasses. When Clark has to perform a miracle, he switches to that uh, Superman harness. Yes, he wears athletic tights and a long cloak. Well, what I can't figure out is this, Mr. Siegel. Now, how does he change his clothes so fast? Well, after all, he's Superman, Fred. I wouldn't care if he was Gypsy Rose Weinstein. (laughs) Nobody can get into that long underwear ensemble in less than five minutes. Now, how does Superman do it? Uh, confidentially, Fred, he wears his outfit under his business suit. Oh, when he's Clark Kent, he has those streamlined bell brigands on underneath, is that it? <laughs> right, he's always ready for action. Well, if he wears woolen underwear all the year round, he sure gets action. <laughs> well, thanks. Thank you a lot, Mr. Siegel. I certainly enjoyed this opportunity to get the lowdown on Superman. It's always a pleasure to talk about my protege, friend. Say, confidentially, if your jumbo Peter Pan can use a part-time job, I have a little chore coming up around the first of the year. Superman is good at lifting things, isn't he? Uh, yes, Fred. Uh, do you want him to pick up something? Yes. Uh, my option. <laughs> I'm afraid that's the one thing that even Superman can't do. I get it. Uh, th- good night, Fred. Good night, and thank you, Mr. Jerry Siegel. <laughs> And now it gives me great pleasure to present to this convention the man who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a high-powered bullet to its target, bend steel in his bare hands. Superman, who walks around among ordinary mortals disguised as mild-mannered Clark Kent. And here he is, Clark Kent. Hello, everybody. I just want you to know that I consider it a rare privilege to say a few words of greeting to the members of the Independent Magazine Wholesalers Association of the South. But I should like to take this opportunity to change to Superman. In behalf of my publishers, publishers of Action and Detective Comics magazines, I want to welcome you to this Independent News Company meeting. May I also say that I'm very happy to be here with you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got something to say here. Say, who are you? Who am I? Do you ask who I am? That's what I said. Who are you? Why, I'm Harry Donenfeld, your boss. My boss? I never even heard of you. You've never heard of me? No. Why, you... Look, I took you off a drawing board and made a man out of you. I splashed your name from coast to coast. I put you in magazines, on the radio, and in newspapers. I just completed the arrangements to put you on the screen. And you never heard of me... Step aside, Superman, while I say a few ways of greeting to Curly Sandoval and Ruth Wiener and the rest of my friends here. Superman doesn't step aside for anyone. Say, I think what you need is a little trip up in the air. Come on. Hey, ouch! Let me go! Let me go! Sorry, you need to be calmed down. So up we go. Up, up. Hey, take me down! Take me down, Superman! 
do you like it up here a thousand feet in the air? I don't like it. I got a weak stomach, and any minute I'm going to lose it. Please take me down. Okay. Here we go. Now. Here we are. Oh, where are we? Where am I? Why, we're back at the Independent News Company meeting. Oh, thank God. Now look, Superman, let's be friends. No more tricks, please. Okay, we'll be friends. And just to prove that I am your friend, I'll fly you back to New York when the convention is over. That's what you think. For my money, an airplane is fast enough. <laughs> look at Harry run. Well, goodbye and good luck. <laughs> 